Hello, everyone, and welcome to our International Development and Social Change Major Spotlight. In this session, we will cover everything from taking introductory level classes to completing hands-on work. Today, we are joined by Cynthia Karen, professor of IDSC. Cynthia, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure thing. So um, I'm Professor Cynthia Karen, and I'm in the Department of International Development, Community and Environment, and that's where the International Development and Social Change major sits. Um, I want to congratulate you on your acceptance to Clark, but I'm really excited that you're interested in international development because this is an important year for me. 30 years ago, I graduated from Clark University with a degree in international development and social change. And I just want to talk a little bit about what I did in the past 30 years because my career trajectory sort of really follows what a lot of our students in IB end up doing. Um, so I did my undergraduate degree in international development and social change and the major encourages students to have a specialization in a particular area. So my specialization was in environment and sustainability. So um, I got even more excited in environment and sustainability because during my junior year, I spent the entire year in South India. And that's an important aspect about Clark's program in general, but also study abroad really is enticing for our undergraduates, right? We're studying international development. We should try to get a little bit of international experience if, if we can and if we can afford to do it. So I went abroad for a year in India and I got really excited about how people used trees. So when I came back to Clark in my senior year, I took a bunch of ecology classes and then I went and got a master's degree in forestry at Yale. And then after that, I went and worked at the World Wildlife Fund in Bhutan, helping them design their parks and protected areas. Um, I worked in two specific national parks, working on nature conservation, again, directly related to my Clark and my master's degree education. And then I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I was really interested and I loved doing field work. That was one of the things that Clark really encourages students to do. And by field work, that could be something that you do internationally, or that could be an internship, and that could be a placement in Worcester. And I'll talk a little bit about that more when we talk more about the, the ID curriculum. I got a PhD at Cornell, and then after that, I went and worked for the United Nations. So basically, all the things that I wanted to do in international development, I did. And then, this will happen to many of you, you will find yourself in a position where you need to make some choices because of your personal life. And then I had a family and I thought, I've lived in South Asia for almost 20 years. So pretty much from 2000 and early 2000s through the mid you know, to, to 2010, 2012, yeah. I lived overseas. And I decided I need to come back to the United States so my daughter can know her grandparents. <laughs> and as luck would have it, Right after I got back to the States, there was an opening in the International Development Department at Clark. I applied for it and I got it. You've been right? here so since. now, the greatest part about what I do now is I share all of my international development practice, what I did in the field with the UN and with other um, international organizations. I bring that experience into the classroom. That's awesome. Thank you so much for all that information. Uh, definitely touched on some of the outcome possibilities that students want to know about through uh, kind of taking IDSC at Clark, so just great. And we're really glad that you came back to the States because we're doing this today, so um, awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the major. I wanna start kind of at the basics and then go into more applied learning, like hands-on internship level things, and then talk about um, a little more about outcomes than we already have. So um, in talking about the basics, I wanna give students an idea of what they can expect maybe as uh, like a first year student, so can you talk a little bit about maybe um, some FYI classes that have recently been offered or uh, just simple requirements like major requirements that you want to put on students' radars as first-year students? Sure. So we offer a number of first-year intensives in international development. There's one that's offered annually, and that's Professor McLean's um, class on visualizing human rights. So Professor McLean is an anthropologist. He does a lot of work with the uh, Humanitarian and Human Rights Lawyers Lab at Harvard University. So he talks a lot in this class about what are human rights, the cultural dimensions of human rights, and um, sort of the human rights or what could be considered human rights violations. Um, some of the uh, practical things or sort of challenges that he's been discussing in his class lately is the use of drones 
and the ways in which drones infringe on privacy and perhaps human rights. Yeah. Um, there have been other FYIs in the past two. Uh, there's been one on the global city. Um, so that one is offered sort of biannually. So those are the FYIs. In the first year, if you're thinking about doing an ID major, um, there are a few classes that you sort of want to clean off your plate in that first year. One would be Economics 10. So Economics 10 is a prerequisite for the economic development class that is a requirement for the major. Gotcha. But what's good about Econ 10 is it fulfills a lot of other requirements, right? It's a prereq for lots of different classes. So it's good to take Econ 10 in that first semester and Econ 10 is offered like in four or five sections every fall. So it's pretty easy for a class to, that you can get into. Um, if you you also might want to think about taking ID 125, which is Tales from the Far Side. That's a large lecture that sort of introduces you to the main key concepts in terms of international development. We talk a lot about colonialism. We talk about globalization. We talk about debt restructuring and third world debt. And um, now we talk a lot about um, environmental sustainability, resilience and resilience in the era of global climate change, but I can assume that thinking about pandemics is also going to be something that we will integrate into that course in the near future. That would be very, um, very, very timely. Mm -hmm. But awesome. Thank you for those examples. Um, you mentioned kind of econ 10 being a prerequisite for a, a variety of, of classes and, and other disciplines. Is it easy to maybe kind of transfer in or out, like if you're undecided, but you're thinking IDSC, is it is it an easy program to jump into or maybe like not jump ship, but change out of if it's not working out for you? It is, because one of the things that's unique about international development and social change is that it is what we call an interdisciplinary major. So while we have core ID classes that me and my colleagues teach within the department, uh, because it's an interdisciplinary class, we draw from resources in other departments, right? Because in order to effectively address problems of climate change or effectively address problems of uh, poverty creation and working towards poverty reduction, you need to have an understanding of social systems, cultural systems, um, and economic systems, right? So there are classes in the sociology department, in the political science department, in the econ department, and then I would say in the geography department, as well as environmental science. In those five, in those five majors, um, the classes will count or fill, fulfill major requirements in ID. So, you know, one of the things that you might want to think about is look at the different majors that you're interested in and then see if there are classes that overlap with them. So that way in your first and second years, you're sort of as I tell my students, killing two birds with one stone, right? So you're, you're doing things that you're interested in, you're not quite sure you wanna make the decision yet on what to major in, but you've, you've been strategic, right? In, yeah. in, your, in your course selection, and that's one of the things that peer advisors and your first year intensive um, professor will, will help you do, think strategically about how you choose classes and identify what your interests are. Awesome, that's great. That's really great advice. Being strategic, I think, in the first years really pay off for students kind of down the road. So I think I know we in admissions kind of advise students to, to think in that sort of way as well. So um, awesome. So after students have kind of gone through the basics, gone through the motions at the beginning, can you give an idea of some of the more intense um, experiences they'll have, maybe with some research or internship opportunities? I'm um, kind of this hands-on applied learning piece. Mm -hmm. um, so. There's, uh, there's two other parts of the major that I just want to talk about that sort sure. of will touch on that. Yeah. One is the four course specialization that I mentioned at the, at the introduction, right? What we want our students to do is to have a really um, sort of deeper understanding of a particular substantive issue area, okay. right? And this really sort of aligns, so you align your academic program with um, practical work experience or internship experiences. And that's what you do within the specialization in those four courses, as well as in either your required internship or your required um, applied research credit, right? So for example, our students might be interested in health. Um, so they start taking classes in health. The faculty that teach health in the department also have connections with City Hall. So sometimes they will do internships in the public health department for the city of Worcester. Um, also our students, we have a lot of students and a lot of faculty that work on food and food systems. And one of the things that's really nice about Worcester is though, even though Worcester is a really large city, mm -hmm. it's surrounded by a very large farming community. 
right? Yeah. So students are able to actually do coursework in agriculture, right? We're not an ag school at Clark, we're in the heart of the city, right? But students can take classes in agriculture, they can take classes in ecology, and then, you know, within 10 or 15 minutes of a drive, they can do an internship on a farm. There's lots of organic farms around Worcester. Um, Heifer International, which is an international organization that works on livestock and has projects on livestock around the world, has a site in Rutland, Massachusetts, where they have a farm. I've had lots of students that have done projects and internships at Heifer International, which is in Rutland, which is not that far from Worcester. Yeah, that's close. Um, the Community Harvest Project is um, a place where uh, students often do internships. They have a farm and they have an orchard. A lot of that food then goes into the local food banks. Um, and then I'll just give one other example, which has to do with um, another issue area that we spend a lot of time working on and thinking about an ID and that's uh, refugees and forced migration. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the other exciting things about Worcester is that it's a gateway city. So that means when the United States Department um, of Refugee Resettlement is thinking about resettling refugees in the United States of America, they don't tend to go to big cities like Boston, they tend to go to these secondary cities, which are called gateway cities, and Worcester is one of those. So there are all sorts of nonprofit organizations that students do internships with, with refugees, and about a half an hour outside of Worcester, there's a farm in Lancaster, Massachusetts, where former refugees that used to have agricultural-based livelihoods in their former countries have started and operate their own farm. Mm -hmm. So students who are interested in agriculture, they're interested in thinking about uh, refugee integration, right, and how do refugees create that yeah. sense of belonging, often do internships at that farm in Lancaster. So um, that's how our sort of academic program aligns with the practical work experience, but also sort of tags on to um, the internship requirement. No, that's, that's great. And I, I know a lot of students are really interested in sustainability and sustainable practices. So kind of those, those opportunities at orchards, farms, especially locally um, to Worcester are going to be really appealing to a lot of our uh, students looking at Clark. So that's great. You mentioned study abroad uh, when we were kind of talking a little bit earlier um, as sometimes an integral part of students' uh, international development and social change experience. Um, are there any programs that students maybe frequent or are there any programs that stand out or maybe that should stand out to students who are looking to come to Clark and maybe study IDC and also go abroad? Mm -hmm. So, and th this is a good point because one of the things about the ID major that I haven't really talked about yet is our emphasis on skills. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we want our students to come away with are either strong language skills or strong analytical skills. Um, the language skills part is um, a lot of our students double major. This is one thing that I think Clark is really good at. Clark is really good in the structure of its curriculum to allow students to double major. So there are, there are a lot of undergraduate students who double major in international development with either French or Spanish as a second major. And those students will often either um, go to Argentina for a year to increase their Spanish. They will go to Senegal to increase their, their French knowledge. They will go to Seville, Spain, even though that's a big city, you might not think international development in a large city like Seville, Spain, but students um, will go to Seville um, to work on their language skills, but also look at issues around migration um, and, and refugees in, in Europe. Um, so, there, so students often strategically choose uh, the places that they wanna study abroad um, in, to overlap with the language. Um, one other thing that I have found that students are doing in the past few years uh, is they're studying abroad for the whole year, but they're going to two different countries, mm. right? So they're not doing the full year in one country. They're doing, you know, a the fall semester in Italy, and then they're doing the spring semester in Thailand, right? Or they're doing the fall semester in Botswana, and then they're doing the spring semester um, in England, right? So students are really, they're really creative in terms of what, what they want to get out of study abroad and how it aligns with their program. So study abroad is an important part of ID and being a Clark, but it's also a good place for students to sort of get on the ground fieldwork experience because uh, the students will normally do a study abroad program that has um, an internship placement within it. Okay. Yeah. So that way they'll be working with a small NGO or a nonprofit um, as part of their study abroad experience. That's awesome. Thank you for all that information. So we've talked a little bit about the basics of the program and the things that are required of students. We've talked about some of the internship and kind of hands-on opportunities that are presented to students through IDSC. Can we touch on outcomes now? Like 
can you give me an idea of what some recent grads are up to or what some people are end up doing? Is it more employment? Is it post-grad work? Like what, what are IDSC majors kind of up to these days? I would say about 25% of the ID undergraduates go right into a fifth year program. Um, and they don't necessarily do the community development and planning and international development fifth year program that uh, the ID department runs, but they might do the fifth year program in public administration or communications or the MBA. Um, so I would say about a quarter of those students um, will do a fifth year program. Uh, and the good thing about the fifth year program is it allows you again to get more work experience. And then several of our students will stay in Worcester for a few more years, moving up the ranks through local organizations in Worcester, and then move to larger cities like Philadelphia, Boston, and Washington, DC, and mm -hmm. take on positions um, in, in those cities. Um, so for example, I have a recent student who um, did a fifth year program in communications after her ID major, she worked in Worcester with homeless shelters for a long time. Nice. And now she's the director of digital marketing for the Malala Fund. I think a lot of us might be familiar with Malala. She was the girl who was um, shot by the Taliban because she wanted an education in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. right? So she has a very large nonprofit. This student is the digital manager for all of the social media content and campaigns that are done wow. for Malala Fund. Um, we also have a lot of students um, that will sort of follow um, a private sector track. So some students will go and work at Accenture or they'll mm -hmm. go work at Booz Allen, right? And do sort of corporate social responsibility work. Or they might try to um, get a job being a contractor for the United States government. So we have an awful lot of students that work in these sort of private sector consulting firms in the Washington DC Beltway. And they are directly um, doing work for the United States Agency for International Development. Um, and then we have an awful lot of students who um, work in the nonprofit sector um, that sort of uh, stay, um, who sort of like work in, by nonprofit sector, they might either work in organizations like nonprofits that are delivering services to um, marginalized communities, mm -hmm. or they're working in the private sector so to sort of build strategic partnerships between community-based organizations and private sector corporations. Um, and then I would say the last sort of outcome immediately after graduation that our students pursue is either AmeriCorps, City Year, or the Peace Corps, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. These programs that, again, allow you to work um, on issues of social justice and community development, um, and also sort of, have good opportunities for scholarships if you want to go and do a master's degree. I mean, that's one of the things that students should also think about, right? Yeah. Um, these might not be sort of high income jobs right out of graduation, but they come with all sorts of perks in terms of your financial aid loans and also um, grants and financial aid to do a master's degree later on. So those are the kinds of immediate outcomes that our students have after graduation. Totally, thank you. And yeah, we when we talk about our placement rate, just generally with our students, we we include employment, uh, pursuing a postgrad degree, and pursuing service like Peace Corps, Teach for America, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, just because it is quite popular with with our students. So awesome! This information has been really, really great. Um, it's been a snapshot of the major. Um, there's definitely a lot more to IDSC at Clark. But uh, if you have any more questions. Uh, feel free to reach out to myself or Cynthia, uh, but before we kind of cut this off, would you mind maybe giving a piece of advice to incoming students as they're kind of watching these videos and thinking about their decisions and things like that? Um, just a general piece of advice for students. I would say follow your heart and follow your gut um, because you have no idea where life is going to take you, right? So just if, if something feels right, do it. If something feels right, but you're scared to do it, do it. <laughs> Face those fears. Awesome. Well, Cynthia, thank you so much for spending some time with me this morning. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much.